Welcome to the channel, my name is Rob and I am on a mission to discover more and more about the amazing country that is Poland and we are looking at the culture, the language and the people and in today's video we're going to check out Lech Wałęsa, the key figure of removing communism from Poland. If you do enjoy this video then please like and subscribe but also go over to our vlog channel Charlie and Rob and you can check out our playlist when we visited Poland. We've been to Krakow, Charlie's been to Gdansk and we've got more trips planned. This old barrack in Gdansk was originally a torpedo warehouse located some 500 kilometers from Berlin. This is where the Iron Curtain began to crumble. Back then this was still called the Lenin shipyard. Today it's still used for welding, hammering, shortening or lengthening ships. The smell of rust and iron hangs in the sea air. Here we find the European Solidarity Centre, the heart of liberal Poland. We meet the hero of the Solidarność movement, Lesz Wałęsa. Still a non-conformist, even the shirt he is wearing seems to be an open challenge directed at Poland's mm. current government. It reads Constitution, in quotation marks. Nobel Peace Prize winner and former Polish president, back then co-founder and leader of the Solidarność movement. You see, I grew up without a father. I'm sure he would have looked after me. And then I probably would have become the director of this shipyard and not just a worker. I was certainly cut out for it. Instead, I became an electrician, but one who challenged the director here head on and became famous. Now you tell me, was that good or bad? So this guy, he had a life that was ready for him and he would have been a success. But because you get that where you have families that, you know, generation after generation after generation, the children become what their father was. And he said, no, I want to do something different. And he, I think to have, to do what I think he did, um, I think you've got to have one of those characters where you're a little bit difficult. I, I'm probably like that. You're a little bit difficult. You sometimes speak before you think um, and you, you go against the norm sometimes. In the summer of 1980, Lesh Wałęsa joined the striking workers. The norms were too high, the shops were too empty, the work was too dangerous. They were also fighting for their rights and for freedom, just like today. After 18 days, the communist government was brought to its knees in this room. Lesh Wałęsa signed the agreement with a noticeably large pen. Solidarność, the first independent trade union in the Soviet bloc, was born. Technically speaking, it was our Solidarność movement that eventually led to the fall of the wall. But political leaders at the time, and the whole world, could see that communism was coming to an end. The time was ripe for change. Sometimes it's all about timing, right? And, and I think, so I don't know enough about communism falling apart. I don't know, and that will be something I want to learn about. Um, and But like he just said, you know, people can see that it was falling apart. And, and it's almost that breaking the camel's back, that, that stick that broke the camel's back. And it all then crumbles around, right? Or just think of like sugar cubes, putting that final sugar cube and it all comes tumbling down. Um, but it had to, you needed movements like this to create that divide sometimes look at the moment divide in the uk for example is awful and it's not doing good but sometimes creating divide like this is good in the spring of 2019 solidarność celebrated its 13th annual round table a further polish democratic convention the anniversary was marked by a container outside the center the conservative government did not send any form of congratulation a telling absence the government is more concerned with supporting people like Albert Budlewski. He lives in eastern Poland, where birth rates are higher and church pews are fuller. Mm. His home village has just over 2,000 residents, virtually all of whom voted for the National Conservative Law and Justice, or Peace Party. The farmer says peace keeps its promises. 
I voted for the Peace Party in 2015. I'll keep voting for them because I believe they'll do everything to keep the villages in Poland strong. The party came to power in 2015 thanks largely to the 500 plus program under which families receive 500 zloty per child per month along with free school books and money for school starters. It's said to help people get up from their knees, as they say in Poland. This is a separate issue, but it does annoy me that governments pay people to have children. It does it really annoy, as someone that doesn't have children and, and children aren't on the kind of list at the moment. People just have kids to make money sometimes. And I'm not necessarily saying this is always the case here. And actually, it's probably a good thing to grow the country. But it does frustrate me a little bit. We can tell by our wallets. The money is benefiting our children. It's for additional tutoring and classes. And for vacation. The money from the state which receives generous subsidies from the European Union makes life more comfortable for the farmers. And yet the Berlewski family wouldn't say they're grateful that communism ended and the Iron Curtain fell. They feel the former hero Lesh Wałęsa betrayed them and made a deal with the communists. When Lech Wałęsa was president, he invited foreign investors into Poland. Back then, that might have been a good idea, but they let too many in. Too many Polish people were sold out. Thank goodness the peace put an end to that. Today, the Polish capital, Warsaw, is like a portfolio exhibition. It's a city of global conglomerates. Their sleek, cosmopolitan skyscrapers would fit anywhere in the world. The city has changed beyond recognition since the fall of communism. German car manufacturers, Chinese banks, American consultants. A reporter asks, has Poland sold itself out? <laughs> This is a different world, a new world. Anyone with enough motivation, power and finances can take whatever they want. Things aren't good the way they are. We lack rules. But I'm sure it'll sort itself out in 100 years. But Levski's home village is hosting an agricultural trade show. They are all proud of their new prosperity they can keep up with the rest of Europe, at least when it comes to agriculture. Even if they are peace voters, now living in a unified Europe is a given. 30 years ago, that wasn't the case. The founding of that first trade union in the port city of Gdansk all those years ago set off a historical chain reaction between the East and West that led to the end of the Iron Curtain. Wow, um, that was an interesting one. I, I, it wasn't a, a real story of, of, of this guy. It was more of a basic what he did and now what people think of it looking back at it. And it's almost, well, one minute you don't want communism. That, so what's the opposite of communism? And maybe you don't necessarily want the opposite. You want something in between. And I get that because capitalism isn't always amazing. Yes, it's got its pros and it's got its cons. Um, and you almost want somewhere in the middle. But you know, people didn't want communism and now you don't have it. And you're better off. People are better off. People of Poland are better off financially. And obviously I'm generalizing, but now there's people that are moaning uh, and they've just been given all this free money, basically. And bearing in mind that money comes from somewhere. Just remember that when you have to pay your taxes and things. Um, that's this. This is a weird video because... Um, it's just, you don't know what you want. And I'm not saying you don't know what you want. I mean, the people in the video don't know what they want, almost. Um, but let's be honest, he fought against communism for what he was hoping at the right as the right thing. And, and yes, he admits that it's not necessarily gone exactly the right way, um, but it's still better than what you had. Um, and having, letting in these businesses from other countries is improving Poland. Obviously, it's also improving the, 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 the sizes of people's wallets at the top of these businesses. 
I'd love your opinions on this one. Uh, this one is a video that I would love your comments and your feedback. What do you think of this man? Um, what do you think about that solidarity movement? Um, would you prefer communism? Would you, did, if you are of the age of you remember communism, what was better back then or now? I'm hoping people would say now, but you never know. You never know. I think it may be a generational thing. Um, and it'd be interesting to read the comments. Thank you so much. Uh, another character in the history of Poland that I have had the basics of exploring. So thank you very much. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will catch you next time.